hear me talk because I have such a small voice. <laughs> um, public speaking is like my worst fear, so don't look at me. Um, my husband is Ivan Owen, and he, because we we're running behind, he had to run over and do some amazing things in the press room. Um, so I'm going to kind of pretend like I know what he would have said, except I'm cuter and I don't have a beard. Um, so pretty much my life really changed um, about three years ago when um, my crazy inventor husband um, ran into the room and said, I got an email from a carpenter who cut off his fingers and wants me to help him make a hand. I'm going to do that. And I said, okay, you do that. And um, so we, we had this vision of, of making these hands and teaching all these people how to make them. And um, in, the, in the beginning, it was people would email us and want us to do it and make it for them. And, and then we realized that if we made it for everyone, how are they going to fix it when it breaks down? How are they... How are they going to be empowered to do this for their own child? Um, if, if you make a hand for a child, you're pretty much responsible for every time something breaks, they're going to email you and want a replacement part. And, and really, that's just not going to work. <laughs> so our, our goal, mine and Ivan's goal, has been to, to, to reach out and teach families how to make these hands themselves. Um, this summer, we had three families meet with us in um, Washington State, and they all came, and we sat around a picnic table, and we had all the parts spread out, and we went step by step, and each of these families, um, along with the kids, they made them themselves. They, they spent three hours um, screwing things in, it was just amazing to see what these kids can do, and they're so excited that it's part of them. Um, they put it on. It's, it's not just a, a toy-looking thing. It's actually part of them, and having that pride in, and making it themselves is just really amazing. They're, they're not just like, look, I got this cool hand. It's, look what I made. Look what I can do. Um, I'm going to go tell everybody about this, and I'm going to teach other people. Um, so... With all those, all those families, now we've got two of the parents are looking into 3D printers so that they can start making them for other families. Um, we've got one of the other moms is um, trying to get some 3D printers into her school so that her son, when he goes to high school, his, his classmates can use it and they can all build hands for people and, and use the technology for um, prototyping and getting them excited about making changes in the world. Um, we've got some amazing families over here. We've got Peter and Peregrine, father and son. Um, Peter created the... <laughs> Peter created the uh, talon, the OD hand, the flex tensor and is a big part of the new raptor hand. Um, and they kind of just have really jumped in. <laughs> and uh, we, get, we get tons of feedback from Peregrine. He's one of our oldest users. Um, and his, his feedback is just, he, yeah, it's just awesome. Um, he's, he will tell us flat out if something really, really sucks. Um, and how to make it better. And um, a lot of what our new design has come from is feedback from Peregrine. Um, it, it wouldn't be the, the robust, strong design that we have if we didn't have the users giving us feedback. Um, and then we've got Greg and Cool Hand Luke over there. He's got his own Facebook page, so make sure you check that out. Greg, is, he went out and got his own 3D printer, and he's been making hands for his own child, and they've been putting it together. Um, Luke also has a two-thumbed version, because two thumbs are better than one. Um, and uh, so I think I'm just going to let them kind
kind of answer some questions and tell you more about what it's like to be a family working on these things together. Maybe. All right, so I'm gonna have you guys introduce yourselves and um, tell them a little bit about how you became a member of Enable. Do you have a microphone over there? <laughs> uh, I'm um, Peter Binkley, um, and I'm a, a, a middle and high school uh, uh, ESL teacher. Uh, so um, I don't really have any background in uh, assistive devices or prosthetics. Um, I, I guess I, I studied and uh, became a, a massage therapist uh, some years back, so I have some understanding of musculoskeletal anatomy, but, uh, but beyond that I have uh, no formal training in engineering or design. Uh, I've just always been, uh, I guess, kind of a tinkerer. Uh, I have, uh, uh, I guess, a huge source of motivation for this project uh, sitting next to me. Um, well, I guess, yeah, I'm Peregrine Hawthorne. Um, I started with this when we, we saw the video with the, the kid picking up the stuff off the table with the 3D printed hand, and that was, that was awesome, so we had to go and do it. And we spent about three months collaborating from across the country. I was in Seattle, he was in Virginia. And after that, we actually got to meet with got to meet with Ivan Owen right before his TED talk. He was coming down to Seattle, I got to go out, and he mentioned this really cool sounding group full of engineers and people who, and families and people who are interested in this. So we, we joined up and found this, well, this here. Um, so yeah. Hello, I'm Greg Dennison. Um, a year ago, I knew absolutely nothing about 3D printing. Um, until I joined up with this group, um, got great feedback from a lot of the members, uh, ordered my own 3D printer. Uh, within two weeks, we had the first hand printed out, and about two, three weeks later that, um, we started with the Cyborg Beast of Design. Um, I've printed maybe four or five of the Cyborg Beasts, and recently started with the, uh, the Raptor hand. So, um, it's just been amazing for us. Um, since he was born, we didn't know what to do. We just let him go on his own and make his own decision later in life if he wanted to try anything like uh, transplanting toes or anything like that. It, I was not gonna make the decision for him. And we saw Paul and Leon McCarthy on CBS Evening News and that started our ball rolling. And here we are 10, 11 months later, and it's just been amazing. So my next question is, um, did any of you ever try a prosthetic before this? And if so, um, did you like it? Or like that? For, I guess, about a week, I had, I get, we called it an opposition bar. It would, just something strapped to my forearm, I could push on it with my paw, and yeah, I would, used it for maybe a week off and on before I decided it was more trouble than it was worth. Um, other than that, I went for a little over 18 years before we picked up this stuff and started playing with it. Um, what were your first thoughts about the hands and what was it like to make it together? Um, it was uh, summer of last year or late spring, early summer that we first saw a video of uh, little Liam, a uh, little uh, South African kid, picking up uh, objects with a 3D printed hand. 
and I had heard about 3D printers and was and was in the process of, uh, of getting a 3D printer, although I didn't really know what for yet. Uh, and uh, I, I, at that moment, I, I knew why. Um, and uh, we got just incredibly excited about it. Um, uh, I didn't uh, mention the first one how I became a member of Enable. So, uh, summer of last year, Farid and I uh, figured out how to use a 3D printer, uh, and we ended up using the Snap Together Robo Hand, uh, which we uh, which we printed and uh, tried to put on them at first. But it's it's made of right angles, and people are not made of right angles. So we had to uh, do some cutting of a knuckle block and. We bent some of the plastic under hot water in order to make, uh, in order to make the device fit the contours, uh, kind of an hourglass contour of uh, a peregrine's hand, and then use uh, uh, rivets to, uh, to mount uh, leather onto the plastic. Uh, so that was kind of how we got into it, and our, uh, I guess, initial I guess, innovation uh, on these uh, open, uh, open designs. Uh, I posted a comment on the uh, Snap Together RoboHand page uh, saying how excited I was about this and that we made a device and it was a great experience for us. And uh, shortly thereafter, I got a message from uh, Ivan Owen who uh, asked if we could uh, show him pictures of what we had uh, created. Well, I had already posted uh, like a 20 second video on YouTube of the device. Uh, so I gave him a link to that and he saw it and uh, Got uh, very excited, I guess, uh, and uh, asked if um, if uh, we would like to uh, uh, join Enable, and um, uh, the rest is history. We actually had uh, no access to any prosthetic devices or anything like that. Said so we just we let him go on his own. Um, my husband is back, so I'm going to let him do this now. <laughs> so this is Ivan. He's awesome. Thank, thank you, Jen. <laughs> so, you know, the, this event's been, been really fun so far, and uh, um, just with so many things going on at once, I apologize that I wasn't here at the beginning of this. I'm, I'm very appreciative to my wife, who is a, 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 a very shy person, so took a tremendous amount of courage for her to just jump in at the last second. So, okay. and what was the last question that was asked? <laughs> so. Oh, okay. Okay, excellent. So, what were uh, your first thoughts about the hands, and what was it like to, to make one together? And uh, do you, would, you, would you, you and uh, Luke like to start, Greg? When we started out, we had uh, access only to the Snap Together Robo Hand. Like I said, about two weeks, we got it printed out, and it's half plastic, half hot glue. It's, it's a little on the flimsy side. It's still a learning process, uh, progress for me, uh, being extremely new to 3D printing. Um, right at the beginning of the year, Jorge's team had released the Cyborg Beast, and I mean, it was a terrific design. We jumped on it, and do you like them? Yeah. <laughs> Is it your favorite hand so far? Yes. So, um, it was actually based on Luke um, for moving the thumbs to the bottom, for being able to grab bottles better and whatnot. I apologize, I do not have the double thumbs with me. Um, I actually left one back home. Um, and wasn't able to get one printed out, but usually there is a, another thumb on the opposite side so you can you know, grab a cup or anything cylindrical, you know, you can, you can grasp pretty easily, so. Uh, 
Yeah, we uh, we also started with the snap together and you described a little bit of what we did. We uh, I didn't even put it on when it was in its original form. We took the hacksaw to the knuckle block and took and yeah, bent bent pieces under boiling water and all sorts of all sorts of crazy tinkering stuff. Um, and even after all that, the first hand we had, uh, it was really fun, but I couldn't open the fridge with it. Um, but we stuck with it long enough to get something that I could really, um, we, I'd give feedback, he would print stuff out. Um, at the first, yeah, first I couldn't open a fridge, uh, the, now I'm in AmeriCorps, I've been, I was helping build, rebuild some houses that had been taken out by tornadoes and more. I was lifting uh, 12 by 8 boards with it. So it's, it's been a really great process coming, doing all that. And the, so the first, first was cool and not that useful, but we, we fixed that second part. And this is a question for, uh, for Peregrine and Luke. Uh, specifically, what are the things that you found that the hand is the m most useful for? Um, for mo most useful, I'd say if I need to carry a lot of stuff. A lot, there are a lot of things that you can do with only five fingers, but carrying a briefcase in one hand and a cup of coffee in the other is not one of them. Um, before I would like pin things to my side, and that works great, except again, I would have so many ruined uniforms and burns on my chest if I did that. A um, few other things like water bottles, opening those, holding something, manipulating it, that kind of stuff. But a lot of it is just like, every day I need to carry some things. I need to carry one thing while doing something else. I need to hold my phone while I, like, while I press a button or whatever. Uh, yeah, a lot of things you can do just fine, but there's just the occasional thing that you really need ten fingers for. show and tell at school before and brought him up and showed everybody's hand um, before he used to he, kids would ask him you know hey what happened to your hand and he would kind of shy away and whatnot and he'd, he'd slowly bring it out and say well God made me this way and show but real hesitant and after you know getting the hands and whatnot and he's walking around showing off this, this cool hand he's got his confidence level even when he doesn't have it on, if somebody walks up, he's just, he's putting it out there. I mean, he's, he's not shy about it at all now. Um, as far as use and whatnot, uh, picking up, the biggest thing would be you know, grabbing a bottle, um, picking up a ball, um, holding on to you know, handlebars. And we had a little sled with a, a handle on it, he was out there going down the hills in the snow with them on, so. Literally, so there's, there's certain uses that it, it does help out. <laughs> um, so, you know, one of the things that I really love about the community is how many, um, how many very impactful changes to the designs have come as the result of either suggestions or direct, direct designs from device users and their family members. Um, what's your take on that and how, how valuable do you feel it is for the users of the devices to be able to make suggestions that influence the design change? Peregrine is my handbreaker. That's his job. Uh, and I, I think that, you know, he was breaking proximal phalanges at a rate of about five or six per week with the, with the snap together uh, robo hand. So 
obviously we needed to make parts of the hand more robust. And, and then when the proximals became strong enough, something else would break because he would put it through heavier use. And so I think just the uh, constitution of the design as a whole, the, the weakest link becomes stronger and stronger. And uh, now we have something that uh, he can lift uh, large uh, pieces of lumber uh, without, without worrying about it. Uh, you know, without cables slipping through, without, uh, without um, uh, parts uh, uh, breaking. Um, so, uh, definitely, the, the user, ex it's all around the user experience. I mean, it's, that's what this, what this is, uh, is about. Um, and, uh, and something, and I'd like to also uh, um, kind of reiterate something that, uh, that Greg mentioned, uh, is that um, the impact, like when we first went through airport security, and he had, and he had one of these on, <clears throat> you know, people notice them, and they're really cool. They're cool looking, and when a kid goes into school with one on, you know, it's, they're like superheroes. They're like they're cyborgs. They're 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 part part human, part machine, which <laughs> which is uh, um, it's just wonderful. It's just wonderful. Um. And so th this is um, just we'll just do a couple more questions real quick here and. You know, one of them was having gone through the experience yourselves of, of finding the enable group and then building a hand for, for, for you know, uh, um, uh, as a family. Uh, what advice would you have for other families out there that might be interested in learning to build a hand but don't have any experience with 3D printing or have never done something like this before? I know for us, um It was, I mean, it was, it was a learning experience, definitely. Um, I, I did a lot of research on the printers. Um, you do a cost, um, user reviews. One of my deciding goals was actually these two guys, because he had such great success with his printer, I ended up getting the same printer. Um, and. I did a lot of research. You know, I mean, like I said, the, the price range is phenomenal on these things. Um, but as far as I, I, I'm, I do have a slightly technical background. So as far as the software went and whatnot, like I said, within two weeks I was able to print something out. But I was not able to do it strictly on my own. Um, the, the enable community, I would ask questions and instantly get results, answers to help me out. Um, I know I bothered Peter quite a bit. And uh, Andreas, and, I mean, it's just, you don't know if you don't ask. Um, and and if, if somebody wants to, do, to get into it, do your research and don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, I mean, that's, that's the biggest advice I can probably give. Uh, yeah, I'd reiterate that. Uh, the, um, if you uh, if you're interested in making a device, I would say join Enable and start asking questions. Uh, really wonderful people uh, and and people who know what they're talking about. Really uh, well educated and uh, just smart uh, people who really care a lot and. Uh, you know, we, we will help you through the process. Um, and, you know, I, I think the main drive for the release of the Raptor was to make something that anyone can do, that anyone can do. And that's, you know, that's been our goal for a long time and to see it, to see it come together um, is, uh, it, so I would say start with a Raptor if you can use one, uh, because once you print it, it's mostly together. So you can, it, it pops together almost entirely, and all you need then is some padding, some Velcro, uh, some screws, just some long, thin screws in the back, and then 
there are three short flat-headed screws that, uh, that attach the Velcro, they actually thread right into the plastic. Um, elastics and cables, something to make the fingers grippy, and you're done. Okay, and so that's, um, that's all the questions that I had for you, and you know, just, just wanted to see if you have any other thoughts, feelings, anything that you'd, that, that you'd like to share. I'd like to build a bit off of the, um, the building self-esteem aspect there. Um, when, I was, when I was growing up as a kid, I was the, the smaller, geeky kid with the funny hand, so I got uh, multiple layers of the, the bullying and all that. So, and I see a lot of that being maybe not entirely, but definitely helped with, with this stuff. But there's also, later on, uh, especially if you get involved with it and making it, uh, this idea of making a part of yourself that that doesn't just involve hands, that's a, a much more... Uh, that idea can carry over into who you are as a person. And I, th and I think that's... When you get involved and you think of yourself as a, as a cyborg, as someone who spends... Like the stereotypical cyborg, this idea, is someone who's puts aside time out of their day to take care of themselves, to make repairs, to upgrade. Uh, that's a very powerful idea. And taking, sort of taking responsibility for who you become and building yourself. So, you know, uh, with, uh, with time, uh, I, don't, I don't think we really, really have the time for uh, audience questions, but I'd say during the event, you know, these, these guys are all really open to sharing their experiences, and I'd approach them and ask, ask them about it if you have further questions. And I think this is your phone? All right. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Feel free to ask questions.